Welcome back. So what kind of reworking happened to our story of the true portrait of Jesus? At the end of the 6th century, the legend gets a decisive boost and develops into two main variations. In the first, the image is no longer made by the painter Hanan in front of Jesus in Jerusalem. The image becomes nothing less than a miraculous self-portrait, not made by human hands. The idea here is that human beings are not able to paint the glorious face of God Jesus. The image must have been given by Jesus himself. And in the second, instead of a, on a picture, of a picture on an icon, the image of Jesus becomes a supernatural picture on a piece of cloth. Henceforth, this portrait, not made by human hands on cloth, is known by the Greek, Greek concept of mandylion. Once again, it is a Syriac apocryphal text, this one from the end of the 6th century, which records a variation of the story about the portrait of the mandylion. Let's hear the ancient text itself. Abgar called skilled painters and he ordered them to go along with his messengers to Jerusalem, depict and bring back in a picture the face of our Lord, as if the king encountered Christ personally. The painters arrived in Jerusalem, but they were not able to paint the image of the Lord's adorable human features. So, when our Lord Christ realized, through his divine understanding, the love of King Abgar for him, and having seen that the painters couldn't paint his image as he was, Jesus took a cloth and imprinted his face on it, and it turned out as Jesus really was. The earliest church image showing this variation of the story is a 10th century icon in the monastery of St. Catherine on the Sinai. The icon shows King Abgar sitting on the throne while his messenger from Jerusalem presents him the portrait on cloth, the mandelion, with the features of Jesus' face on it. Jesus' over face has strong eyebrows, brown hair and a short beard. Long strands of hair fall on both sides. It is this depiction of Jesus' face that henceforth becomes one of the most reproduced images in the iconography of Byzantine art and Eastern Christian art. The icon kept in St. Catherine's monastery was painted at the time when the portrait of Jesus was transferred in 944 from Edessa to the Byzantine capital Constantinople. It was kept in the collection of the treasures in the Imperial Palace. It became one of the holiest relics in the Byzantine capital. This miniature in a Byzantine manuscript, now kept in the National Library of Madrid, illustrates the transfer of the picture to Constantinople. It shows how the Byzantine emperor, surrounded by his dignitaries, receives the portrait of Jesus. He embraces and kisses it. At this period, in the 10th century, many other variations of the story of Jesus' portrait were already circulating and in different languages. One important variation tells how the portrait was miraculously duplicated and brought into other towns 
so that these cities too could possess a copy of the image of the Mandelion, not made by human hands. This copy is known as the Keramion. What does Keramion mean? It is a Greek word for brick. But let's hear the story itself. King Apka was journeying upon the road with his escort back from Jerusalem. They came to the city of Mabuk. They remained overnight outside the city in the shop of a potter. Out of fear of robbers, they placed the portrait of Christ between two bricks. Then they slept. Now, during the night, there came down a dark pillar of fire upon the portrait. And when the guards of that city passed by and saw this grand wonder, they were amazed and cried out. Then they detected that the identical copy of the portrait was fixed firmly two on one brick. Now let's have a quick look at Arabic tradition, in which this story circulated as well. Here we have to distinguish between the Muslim and Christian Arabic traditions. According to Islam, Jesus Christ is a prophet and not at all the Son of God. Therefore, the Muslim Arabs were less concerned with the question of Jesus' true image than the Arabic-speaking Christians. But several Christian Arabic authors liked to recall the story of Jesus' portrait. They often used the story as an argument in polemics with Muslims. Muslims considered the Christian veneration of images as idolatry. Thus, a Christian Arab bishop of the 9th century named Theodora Bukhura wrote a treatise on the duty of Christians to maintain the veneration of icons. One of his main arguments concerns our portrait of Jesus. Another testimony in the Arabic language is given by a Coptic priest from Egypt at the beginning of the 13th century named Abu al-Makarim. He was the author of a kind of ge ecclesiastical geography. In the following videos by our colleagues, you will hear again about this Coptic author. Now, Abu al-Makarim writes about two distinct portraits of Jesus. One portrait is a mandelion stored in a desert, and the other one is a mandelion stored in the imperial church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. The images of Jesus are already proliferating. Jesus' portrait, uh, or the mandelion, was not only considered to be authentic, but also full of healing power. It was used as a talisman. This 14th century amulet scroll in Greek and Arabic from the Beermont Morgan Library in New York testifies to the miraculous power attributed to Jesus' image. The Mandelion became a prominent painting in Byzantine and Eastern Christian art. In our next video, a movie will further highlight the importance of the Mandelion, Jesus' image not made by human hand, of ancient and present Christian piety. Let's see how the Mandelion and its story spread as far as the Caucasus in Armenia and Georgia. Mm -hmm.